part six, we met Frank Pick, Chief Executive Officer of London Transport from 1933, the man who initiated a colourful brand building poster campaign aimed at creating a close relationship between London Transport and its customers. And we saw posters by Ted Cowfer, Eric Revillius, Edward Borden and others very Art Deco in style and using Art Deco to help with building that brand image. In 1924, Frank Pick was then the general manager of the Underground Electric Railways Company of London and he commissioned the architect Charles Holden to design seven new stations, extending what is now the Northern Line from Clapham Common southwest to Morden, the Morden Extension. Charles Holden was probably best known at the time as the designer of Bristol Central Library, which had opened in 1902. And this is a kind of freestyle design that has been described as Tudor revival, but it has very definite modernist elements. And from 1918, Charles Holden's designs become increasingly plain, modernist, more geometric. He'd already done some small scale station alterations for Frank Pick when the new stations were commissioned. And what Frank Pick wanted from Charles Holden were designs that maintained his theme of a recognisable brand. And Charles Holden's stations set a kind of modernist Art Deco style template for the stations that follow. This is Clapham South, it opened in 1926. The apartments above are a later edition, Westbury Court. Collier's Wood opened the same year, 1926. A three-sided facade. If you look closely at the columns, either side of the glazed panel, the capitals are three-dimensional versions of London Underground's Roundel logo. South Wimbledon was built to the same design. And Frank Pick commissioned Charles Holden to design a new headquarters for London Underground at 55 Broadway, above St James Park Station. It was built between 1927 and 1929, and for this building Charles Holden was awarded the Reba London Architecture Medal. It's 12 storeys, and it's on a very awkwardly shaped footprint and over St James Park Station and the platform, so a difficult building to, to design. Very plain facade, but it was relieved by sculptures and they include representations of the four winds, two of which were by Eric Gill, this is his north wind. There was another by Samuel Rabinovich and one by Alan Wyan. It also included representation of day and night by Jacob Epstein and these figures caused a real kerfuffle. There was so much trouble and controversy over them that Frank Pick offered to resign. In the end, Jacob Epstein was persuaded to reduce the size of the manly parts on the smaller figure and the storm passed over. A distinctive Arnos Grove station, the first surface station going east on the Piccadilly line, opened in 1932. The beginning of a planned extension of the Piccadilly line to Cockfosters. Single storey except for the circular ticket hall which rises through the centre with its flat roof. And this design was adapted from Stockholm City Library for which the architect was Gunnar Asplund built in 1928. And in 1930 Charles Holden and Frank Pick had gone on a tour together. They went to Germany the Netherlands, Denmark and Sweden in search of ideas and Stockholm City Library became the inspiration for Arnos Grove. Southgate Station, which opened in 1933, has a similar central drum housing the ticket hall. And what we're seeing here is a change that runs through the Art Deco aesthetic at this time, a move away from the very angular geometry to a more streamlined approach. Now, next time, we're going to the cinema. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder. <laughs>